Back for a rest. Space adventuring. Hey, Captain. I hope I wasn't too much bother at the bar. I did have fun, and I tried some things I never would have otherwise. Some of the drinks we tried I even liked. I guess it's not all disgusting. And I don't feel it today. I guess that water must have worked. I'm glad I had you looking out for me. I wouldn't mind having a drink again. Someday. In the distant future. Anyway. I messaged Jun Lei when we got back and she replied super quick. <clears throat> okay. I was awake half the night thinking about what I sent, anxious to see what you said. I reread my message in the morning and it was unclear. I was drinking when I sent it, otherwise I wouldn't have had the courage. Also, sorry for the typos. Oh, she called mashed potatoes smashed potatoes, but I think maybe that's just what they call them on Groundbreaker. I've ruined things in the past because I didn't say things I should have, like, I've met someone who's become special to me. I want to be honest with her, so if she feels the same about me, there won't be any surprises. I resent you saying such, on account of it being uncomfortably likely. I ought to go write her back. I mean, I already did. Twice. <laughs> but anyhow, thanks for taking me out, Captain. Yeah, so this is my hiding spot now. I was looking for a place that was quiet. I figured the kitchen would be louder than the hold, so here I am. Cozy-like, ain't it? That's in pretty good shape, considering how hard Mr. Hawthorne ran it. It's a Yakita LHA-120, A2 model, I'm pretty sure. The Block 2 design scooshed in extra cargo space, but didn't change the stock engines. Probably a touch underpowered, huh? Accurate in all particulars. I conclude you are Edgewater's board-certified mechanic. So you're gonna call her it, not she? Though my voice is currently pitched to suggest female, I possess no gender. Any pronoun preferred by the user is acceptable. Hello. I am not a board-certified mechanic, but my dad was. He taught me all he knew. Do you understand? Speech recognition is one of the many skills I have been programmed to simulate. You're not simulating it. You're doing it. I asked a question and you answered it. I am gratified you consider this facsimile convincing. I don't see any holes in the hull. I'll take a good squint at her, make sure everything's tip-top. But I think we're cooking with plasma torches. You can do that, you know. My dad taught me how to make grilled cheese sandwiches with a plasma torch. Mostly, yeah. I lived in the maintenance office near all my life. Mr. Thompson never let me forget how funny that was. He meant funny as in odd. It's not normal for anyone to do as their parents. You take a vocational test. That decides your schooling and your career. When I tested out for maintenance, everyone figured it was on account of my dad. They were real unhappy with us. Well, because they were hoping their own kid would get the job and get sent back to Edgewater. When folk go away for schooling, they don't get back to where they begun. Not usually. You go straight to your first job, wherever the company's got an opening. Well, it ain't exactly cruel to have a promise of a paying job. And that's all it is. You go where the company needs you. Where your skills do the most good. Well, I'm good at making things work the way they ought. Not so much at doing such to somebody else's schedule. There's times I'm working deep in the guts of a loader, getting it all running perfect. Then I look up to see it's tomorrow, and I've blown another deadline. Anyhow, I, I was happy to get back home. 
I didn't care much for schooling. Yep, nothing much had changed. Everything was a little grayer, a little dirtier. Dad met me at the shuttle and gave me a big old hug. I noticed straight away that he was moving slower and stiffer. He made a little grunt when I squeezed. About a year. I tried to do more of the work so he could rest. His heart gave him pains. Dad never said that he loved me, you know? I, I knew on account of him showing it. How he'd stay up late to help with my projects or listen to my fretting. Oh, gosh. <laughs> Look at the time. Sorry to bend your ear so long. And I got so much to do before this ship's in decent shape. Good to see you, boss. Didn't I tell you? I'm secretly the chairman's orphan child, abandoned at birth in the back bays. That's right. Can't get anything past you, boss. Honestly, before you picked me up, I was living in the back bays. Spent my whole life up there, watching ships roll in and take off. Always wondered when my ship would come. I was what folks on the Groundbreaker call a stowaway. Means I was invisible. Life carried on for everybody else, but not for me. I had to make my own way. Yeah, because I got sick of being ignored. Got sick of being a nobody. So yeah, I made some noise. Got in a couple scraps. Nobody else in the Groundbreaker is going to look after you. So you had to look after yourself. Learn that real quick. If I never got in that scuffle with my old foreman, you and I never would have met. You'd be off having adventures without me, and I'd still be working on the docks. Hauling boxes was about the only work I could find. Hated every second of it. The foreman and I never got on. Could be I was overreacting. A better man might have turned the other cheek. Exercised a little bit of that, what's the word? Restraint? But on the other hand, Broadsiding the jackass with a toss ball stick? That felt good. That felt real good. You wanna try it? Yeah, I mean, in theory. But I wouldn't have felt half as good. I caught a real lucky break. If you hadn't picked me up, I'd still be back at the docks, waiting for the day my ship arrives. Oh, yeah. I had a prison cell back on the Groundbreaker. Carved my name on the wall. I wonder if it's still there. Thanks for listening, boss. Let's get going. Good to see you, boss. I find myself marveling at the complex simplicity of the Fibonacci spiral. I'm sure you know what that's like. Something vexing you, Captain? Nothing too out of the ordinary. Uh, that's what my parents called it. I grew up in a pit of a town much like Edgewater. I was destined to be a laborer like my parents, but I was infected early with a need to solve the equation. My passion didn't sit well with them. 
On the contrary. They internalized the precepts of scientism like no one I've ever known. They had a pure faith, a faith that brought joy to them regardless of the situation. I envied that. I wanted that peace. I thought if I became a vicar, I could find it. Or at the very least, find out why I lacked it. They thought I was fighting the plan, should have accepted my lot. Some people pursue the clergy for power, prestige, but that was not me. The simple version is this. The force which we call the Grand Architect created the universal equation that underlies and defines everything in the universe. Everything flows from the equation, or in layman's terms, the Grand Plan. Is the Grand Architect a consciousness? A natural force? Did it create the equation on purpose? The answers to these questions don't really matter. The equation, the plan, is all that matters. Contentment is found by accepting one's role in the plan. The plan is not one rigid path. There are a variety of multitudes contained within it. Our paths have variants, but we'll end up adhering to it, whether we like it or not. Some choices make the path smoother, some rougher. You can even go outside the lines, but the further outside you go, it's like an unbreakable elastic band. It will only stretch so far before it snaps back. The further it is stretched, the more violent the eventual correction. I have run headlong into too many walls in my pursuit of the truth. This book is my last hope, and you were my only hope of getting it translated. What about you? What's your story? And how did he do that? Well, you do seem different than every other colonist. Let's pretend for the moment I believe you. What are you going to do now? That seems a dangerous proposition. Why risk your life now that it's been returned to you? Fair enough. Philosophism's a false religion that stands in contradiction to almost everything we know to be true. They believe all is chaos. But most of the philosophist perversion of Bakonu's thoughts came more than a century after his death. something?
message from Dr. Wells. He'd like to congratulate you on finding a route to Monarch. Cascadia is utterly seething with dangerous, highly aggressive creatures more than capable of tearing you limb from limb. You'd have to be a lunatic to land in Cascadia, and I'm reasonably certain I tested your brain for incipient signs of insanity. Trust me, talk to Gladys Cult Kelly. You'll need to speak with Hiram Blythe. He's known as the information broker, and for good reason. I need those chemicals to revive the Hope's colonists. If we don't put a stop to the board, they're going to drive this colony toward a complete societal collapse. You'll see what I mean when you arrive on Monarch. Oh, I've tried. I haven't been able to get through to him at all. Silence from the system's own information broker? Not a good sign. Oh, could be any number of reasons. You'll want to hire the services of a skilled guide. I recommend a hunter by the name of Neoka. Free Once you have everything you... Best of luck. Captain, an unusual wavelength is coming through Monarch's aether wave frequencies. The Eternal is in us all. The OSI would have you believe that your place in society, indeed in the universe, is preordained. A man who works in the mines of Hephaestus, coating his lungs in mercury dust for not but a few bits a night, this fate is set in stone? When he dies young, coughing up black blood, his part in the grand plan? No, I say. Greatness is in everyone. Not just those so fortunate as to have been born into prosperity. That was unexpected and odd. Analyzing the subtextual ordering. I believe it was a type of sermon, Captain. Very zealous in origin. How can I be of assistance? I have lots of minutes. Many minutes. Unlimited minutes, perhaps. I require a captain to pilot the ship. As you may be aware, Captain Alex Hawthorne was a smuggler of some repute. I fail to predict the likely outcome of his reckless behavioral patterns. I should have predicted that. In our travels together, Alex liked to pass time by, as he called it, tinkering to improve my design. If you mean, was Captain Hawthorne my first? Yes, he was. Ha Certainly, Cap. What would you like? Two atoms were strolling through Roseway when one of them exclaimed, I think I lost an electron. Really? The other asked. Are you sure? Yes, I'm absolutely positive. Now playing a Spacer's Choice advertisement jingle. Everyone in Halcyon is contractually obligated to label this or another board-certified jingle their favorite song. As you wish, Captain. See you soon. We are now in orbit above Edgewater, Captain.
how'd you do that? Hey, you got it open. No! Oh, what do you think you're doing? I don't have time for that. Oh. It's all in the wrist. Please, would you kindly inform the crew that long chats with Ada are not required every time the captain leaves the ship? Destination reached. The Groundbreaker. Welcome back. How? Yes, Captain. There's... there's viscera and death everywhere. Gunfire, gnashing teeth. The unemployed! For law's sake, if anyone's receiving this, please send help. What? Uh, no! No, no, no! Captain, we are now capable of accessing the Roseway landing pad. Also, corporate protocol requires that all distress signals include a list of key personnel for retrieval. The embedded names are Anton Crane, Vaughn Cortez, and Orson Shaw. What part of the column? How can... Take care... We're now in orbit above Roseway, Captain. Can we talk? This Roseway business smells. Something tells me things didn't end well for the guy who made the distress call, and whoever or whatever got him will be waiting for us. Just a little caution. Could be a reason no one's picked up this job yet. Nah, just want to make sure we live to get paid. Anyway, we might as well take a look out there, see if we can get the jump on whoever's waiting for us. Do return in one piece, Captain. No security. Hell of a welcome.
Warning, nothing obstruction. Looks like we missed the fun. I done had enough of this shit. I'm just the fucking tarmac guard. No one said nothing about fighting no raps. Somehow, I'm not reassured, Captain. Yeah, you and me both, ma'am. Alarms went off, raps broke loose, and I hightailed it in here to get a wall between me and them beasts. Um, forget I said anything about that. Distress call from here? Shit. They told me that weren't allowed. Got me. I just do what I'm told, and I was told not to do such. Scientist, name of Anton Crane. Someone said he's panicking inside the comm center. Oh, before I forget, Anticleos makes the best pharmaceuticals in Halcyon. Better than nature. Not like that crap Spacer's Choice pedals. You've come to end my life. Let's be on with it. Oh, not actually one of them, are you? I must apologize if my call diverted you. I, uh, may have panicked. Everything's under control now, though, truth be told. I'm not at liberty to discuss the nature of the work I'm doing here. Suffice it to say that its importance to me, uh, to the colony, is immeasurable. 
My research may not quite fall within legal parameters, so I'm under orders to maintain wireless silence. How? I cut the call immediately once I've gathered my wits. The Home Office can't know what's happening here. Captain's got your best interests at heart, mister. Honest. I suppose it can't hurt. If I don't get that research back, my life is over regardless. We were tasked with formulating a new and improved dental gel. One cannot exaggerate the benefits of good dental hygiene. May I continue? While doing research on enzymes specific to the Raptodon's digestive system, we developed an additive which we subsequently discovered to be the most effective appetite suppressant ever. Hours ago, a group of vicious malcontents fell upon us, shot up our labs and loosed our research subjects, the Raptodons. If those Cretans get their hands on my research, well, they'll need not kill me. No, realistic. I don't get that research back, I'll be released from my indenture contract. You can't be serious. No contract, no work. No work, you're a pariah, cast out, shunned. Soon you'll find yourself among... deserters. You know, dregs, ne'er-do-wells, eking out a horrible existence on the periphery of society. Even if that's not my fate, I don't relish being sent to some backwater corporate township. This is temporary, and simply a means to an end. I will be happy to answer. No, realistic. Yes, but don't kill the mother if it's avoidable. We've need of her to replenish our stocks. I think there's gas in the lab somewhere that can be used to put them out. The research is in the safe in my office. You'll have need of my code and key card. The lab's entrance is in the side of a hill. You can't miss it if you just follow the road. You'll pass by the town's original... by the Grand Architect. Jameson. He's in the old lab. My protege. That would surely lighten the weight on my conscience, as I am held to account for the well-being of every scientist here. Too many have been lost. Too many black marks against my name, as it were. And far too much paperwork. Of course they do. Please don't mistake my ambition for callousness. It's just that their constant complaining can begin to wear. They refuse to see the opportunity afforded us here. It's infuriating. Fifty Bit says this guy's already wrapped fodder. Gotta be where Mr. Jameson is. Hope he's okay.
someone knows how to make an entrance. What shuts him up first? A hungry rap or my backhand? How the... Wait, I know you. You're responsible for the Emerald Vale fiasco. How the hell did you get in here? No, not... To... I don't care about the beasts. I care about the front door. This is an egregious breach of protocol. How'd you get in? Ugh. Can't use the centrifuge without supervision. Can't file reports without him double-checking their every word. Can't save myself from mortal peril. It's like he thinks I'm a child. His hands-on management style is coming to a point of contention, I tell you. Please. That man doesn't have an altruistic bone in his body. I just happen to have the metabolic precursors from our last test. I'd wager my last bit that if you brought back the precursors and left me for dead, Anton wouldn't bat an eye. Oh, wonderful! That's much better. I'm getting out of here so I can personally thank him for his compassion.
It ain't stealing if no one sees. Here they come! Take the best shot, asshole. You've returned. Please tell me you've recovered my research. That is wonderful news. I'd feared the worst. Not in this colony, there isn't. But success here will get me to Byzantium. <laughs> 